I now hand the conference over to Mr. Srivastava. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you. A very good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. And I hope that you are all keeping well. We take pleasure in welcoming you all to discuss the operating and financial performance of the company for the first quarter of FY21. We are extremely pleased to share with you that our malls in Mumbai and Pune will now recommence operations from August 5th, 2020, as per the directive of the state government. We assure you of the implementation of the highest standards of safety and look forward to welcoming you all back into our malls. We commenced operations across Phoenix Market City, Bangalore, Phoenix United, Lucknow, and Phoenix United, Bareilly on the 8th of June as per the guidelines of the respective state government. Currently, these malls are operating at an occupancy of close to 90% of the permissible operational area with some activities which are not permitted at each of these locations. At Phoenix Market City, Bangalore, the average daily consumption has witnessed sustained improvement since reopening and has reached about approximately 47% of the average daily consumption of July 2019 for the permissible activities. And this was reached uh, in the week of July 22nd through 26th. The consumption trend has been consistently going up since reopening. Further, the average spend per footfall has also increased over three times to approximately rupees 2,670 in the week of July 22nd through 26th. And this is higher than, much higher than the average daily spend of July 2019 by over three times. We have also launched new digital initiatives, including home delivery and curbside pickup as of last week, where customers can now message, with, message us on WhatsApp, select merchandise from an online catalog, or through assisted virtual shopping from the comforts of their home, pay online for their orders, and choose either home delivery or curbside pickup from the mall. The response from the customers to this initiative has been extremely encouraging, and we look forward to sales ramping up on account of the same. We are also extremely happy to share that we launched our re latest retail mall asset, Phoenix Palacio in Lucknow on the 8th of July. This was a brownfield acquisition, and we took possession of this asset in August 2018 and completed the construction and it was actually ready to commence operations in less than 21 months in March, 20, uh, nine, uh, March 2020. However, in light of the ongoing crisis, we had decided to defer the opening of the mall and the same commenced operations on 8th of July. The mall is spread across approximately uh, 950,000 square feet of the total leasable area and will be a key district consumption hub for us in the region going forward. We take this opportunity to thank all our retail partners for their support in completing their fit outs and being ready to commence operations in this current environment. It possibly makes Phoenix Palacio Lucknow the only new mall to open up in India and possibly across the world during this pandemic. Our commercial office portfolio has seen a steady has been a steady performer despite the outbreak of covid-19 art guild house in mumbai has a leased occupancy of approximately 87% as of june 2020 fountain head tower 1 in pune has a leased occupancy of approximately 95% and is fully operational construction work at fountain head tower 2 is complete and we are witnessing strong interest from potential lessees Work at Fountainhead Tower 3 is on course, and we anticipate to complete work in the next three to four months. Speaking about our projects under development in the detail segment, work across our new malls, Millennium, Phoenix Millennium in Pune, Mall of Asia, Bangalore, Phoenix Citadel at Indore, and Palladium Ahmedabad is back on track. We remain extremely positive on the long-term 
prospects of retail consumption in in india and are extremely confident of strengthening our leadership position once normalcy returns we are well on course to double our retail portfolio and significantly increase our commercial portfolio by financial year 2024 with this i would like to hand over the call to mr kanodia our group director finance who would brief us on our financial performance hi good afternoon friends ladies and gentlemen thank you for joining us on this call continuing uh, with the briefing which uh, mr sishir just gave i would like to share with you some of the key financial highlights of our performance for the quarter ended june uh, the focus of course was on cash flows and conserving our resources because malls except for lucknow bareilly and bangalore were largely shut during this period to give you a better a sense of the cash flow during this period the collections from the retail malls across the group was approximately 400 million from our office commercial portfolio the collection during this period was 330 million while the hotels contributed around 118 million uh, during the same period our residential portfolio also contributed 100 million for the quarter ended june and to add to this uh, we have received income tax refunds across our various spvs to the tune of 400 million during the same quarter uh, our cumulative capex spend was approximately 664 million for this quarter largely on the three ongoing projects uh, namely pune amdabad indore and also some expenditure on and destiny the lucknow mall which became operational payments towards statutory dues including gsts uh, which covered the period for march till may was approximately 46 460 million and other operational expenses across all our assets including malls commercial office retail residential was around 850 million as informed to you earlier we have carried out various cost rationalization efforts across our business verticals which will ensure that we can bounce back strongly once the business environment normalizes in the near future to summarize the cash flow we had a total inflow of approximately 1350 million during the quarter while our expenses were around 2000 million so this resulted in a cash burn of approximately 650 million for the quarter ended june Despite a challenging business environment we continue to maintain a robust balance sheet our consolidated debt and cash stood at rupees 47489 million and 7500 million respectively as on june 2020 we continue to remain prudent in our expenditures and continue to engage with various stakeholders to ensure sufficient cash flows across the group thank you very much for these opening comments and we would be happy to take any specific questions now thank you thank you very much we will now begin the question and answer session anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on their touchstone telephone if you wish to remove yourself from the question queue you may press star and 2 participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question Ladies and gentlemen we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles Reminder to the participants anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 at this time first question is from the line of kunal lakhani from clsa please go ahead yeah hi uh, good afternoon um so uh, basically the rental income that we have booked in pnl is about 32% of the run rate of uh, same quarter last year now this is based on accrual accounting as i understand so so just want to understand what is the status and visibility on the actual collection of the rent i i understand we collected about 40 crores in this quarter Uh, uh would this also include uh, uh some of the historical collections or this includes only the collections for uh this quarter yeah so 
you are right in your assessment that the accrual system of accounting has been followed and all this uh, income that has been booked is based on our uh, concluded or ongoing negotiations with the retailers and accordingly the income has been booked our collections to which uh, you referred to around 40 crores during the period uh, comprises of uh, because it is period april may and june so some of the collections during april were pertaining to feb and march but largely yes they are pertaining to this period uh, of april may and june and uh, we continue to see robust collections in july as well and uh, as uh, during this month we have seen significant cash flow coming in as well okay so so this is it fair to assume that the 884 crores of uh, rental income that get, that we have booked in q1 uh, we should be able to collect uh, by q2 or or was by q3 yeah so we had also indicated in our last uh, call that there was a deferment that we had offered to our retail partners so that they could take some time to start paying us the amount that were due during the lockdown period we now hope that as the mall start operations uh, bombay pune will commence operations very soon within a week's time and of course lucknow bareilly and bangalore have already commenced so for the period under uh, the operating period we hope to collect the funds in the same months or in the same period while for the previous uh, period which is under lockdown the payments will be a little more staggered and come over a period of time so it may not be apple to apple but yes we are hoping that our deals which we have concluded with our retail partners would enable us to recover this money in due course of time and since uh, this deferment is an advantage which we have passed on to our partners they will make sure that this payments get paid out over a period of time sure that that's helpful um, my second question is on 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 the malls in maharashtra like you said it's uh, they are expected to open on 5th october can you some color on on the rent negotiation status on these malls uh, since they've been shut for a long period also also since been shut for a long period because they were there would be more than 50% that we had offered for you know bangalore retailers and we need to cash to support over there yeah hi kunal so uh, just to clarify that we have concluded our discussions with a bulk of our retailer partners uh, across all malls across the group so it's not these uh, negotiations were not limited to only bangalore and lucknow mall which became and bareilly which became operational on june 8th the understanding has generally been that for the period of lockdown on a on a brand to brand negotiation or group to group negotiation we have given a waiver of fixed rental to a certain percentage uh, for the period of lockdown this would roughly translate i would say to about anywhere between 45 to 50% waiver 55% waiver for this period of lockdown in each mall uh having said that we have not concluded the negotiation with certain uh, brands uh, who have not been permitted to commence operations on account of the government uh, notification uh, because we uh, the brands and us we felt it would be better to get into that negotiation once there was visibility uh, of their uh, of their uh, activities being permitted and once they could start trading so we have taken into account that for the purpose of q1 we have considered for the moment uh just to give uh, be absolutely transparent we have considered uh, negligible to no income coming from these activities and therefore our uh, rental estimate for this quarter has shrunk but we hope that as our negotiations conclude we will be able to get more than this approximate 30% that we have considered uh, of fixed rental for the first quarter moving on that moving on once the malls become operational the extent of discount reduces but we have on the other side have also agreed on a higher percentage of revenue share with several of the brands and as consumption ramps up we expect this recovery to increase significantly uh, rather the rental income to increase significantly uh, and so looking at our uh, our estimate would be that q2 would certainly show a much higher revenue coming than q1 right right 
uh, my, my last question is on 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 the cash flow side you the cash burn of 65 crores uh, would that be the peak cash burn for this year uh, considering there was an refund it refund component of about 40 crores which will not be there in in the second quarter or subsequent quarters would you still assume that 65 crore would be the peak cash burn in this this year um I would say that yes, for the quarter, uh, we since our income is going to be going up uh, with the Mumbai uh, and Pune malls also operating, we would and and our operating expenses have been uh, we've been very very uh, prudent on 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 reducing those. We would not expect our uh, we we don't see any reason why our cash one would go beyond this number. Great, that's very helpful. Thanks and all the best. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Puneet Gulati from HSBC. Please go ahead. Mr. Gulati, your line is in talk mode. Please go ahead with your question. Yes, uh, good afternoon and thank you for the opportunity. Uh, if you can, you know, I missed out the breakup of the 200 crores of total expenses. 46 you said was statutory dues, 85 is others, and what was the balance? CapEx. Okay, that was capex. Okay. okay. Yeah. So on on capex, what is the plan now? What 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 are your thoughts on how you would spend for the balance of the year? So uh, capex is uh, largely we have uh, four projects that are currently underway. We have uh, we have uh, Phoenix uh, Millennium in Pune, Mall of Asia in Bangalore. Yeah. Uh, Phoenix Citadel in Indore and Palladium Ahmedabad. Between these and and of course we have Fountainhead uh, Tower Two etc. Uh, Tower Two and some may, there may be some payments to be done against Tower One as well. Uh, Tower uh, Three as well. So cumulatively we expect our capex not to exceed 300 to 320 crore somewhere in that range. Okay. But but it could get impact and be reduced in the event the contractors who are working at these sites are unable to ramp up their manpower. So on the outer side, it could be that number. Okay. Uh, but it could be less than that as well. It's Great. Not as fast as we expect. Okay. Now on your discussions with the retailers, uh, have you seen any instances where retailers have walked out and, and have said that they will shut uh, their uh, shops in any of your malls? No, we've not really. See, let me clarify that uh, you know, with our, uh, we've not seen any such uh, issue in uh, with with the large groups and brands that we have across malls. There okay. may be few smaller single store outlets which are localized to each uh, city, which may may not be able to survive uh, this crisis and. This could be mostly in, let's say, FNB and food court. So across the malls, there may be about 10, 12 uh, at each location, 10 to 12 stores that may not be able to open. But uh, there's not really been any termination as such. About 1%, one could assume a 1% of the total GLA getting impacted by, by certain retailers who are not able to continue with their operation on account of their financial crisis. Oh, okay. One percent is still a small number. Okay. Secondly, on your uh, retailers, uh, you were expected to receive some rent by July as well. Have they largely paid? We have received roughly uh, in July so far. We've received about twenty odd crore of collection from uh, retailer rent. Okay. Okay. And and this is what percentage of the commitments the retailers would have made to you? I think uh, we will deep dive uh, on this offline uh, thing and explain the numbers uh, better. Uh, sure. 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 Okay. Uh, that that's all from my side right now. Thank you so much. I'll come back. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Pulkit Patni from Goldman Sachs. Please go ahead. Sure. Uh, so thanks for taking my question. Uh, two questions. 
Firstly, uh, when I look at the equity invested till June 2020 on slide number 23, just wanted to get a sense, has the equity commitment on these projects changed in the last few months or is it the same number uh, that you had expected to uh, you know, spend on these projects? Yes, in fact, uh, the, no, there has been no change in our equity commitment towards these projects. We continue to have, uh, you know, in, in uh, PNC, Wakard, Hebal, and Indore, we continue to have cash uh, that remains to be deployed as what we had earmarked out of equity there. And uh, Palladium, Ahmedabad as well, uh, we've just commenced drawing down debt, drawing down the construction finance on Palladium, Ahmedabad. Uh, in May, we, do, we, we did the first drawdown. It's at an average cost of about 8.6%. Uh, in the other three projects, which are at uh, Pune, Hebal, uh, Bangalore, and Indore, we have not drawn down any construction finance, and uh, we have enough cash in the JV2 fund construction activities going forward for the next 9 to 12 months. Sure. Uh, so that so the the change that we see in your debt uh, schedule quarter on quarter is a reflection of a the moratorium interest getting added, and the additional debt on uh, Palladium Ahmedabad. That would be that would be correct. Sure. And and my second question is on the previous, raised by the previous participant about, you know, uh, there would be some cancellations. I understand that uh, uh, these cancellations, what, can you highlight what is the treatment of the security uh, that you have against uh, some of these early terminations? Uh, and is that something uh, that we have gained from in the previous quarter in the 40 crore, uh, you know, rental number that you uh, discussed on the retail front? No, so uh, let me clarify that uh, contractually we have, at an average, we have about six months rent as a security deposit, but the termination clause beyond the lock-in may require anywhere between one to three months notice. So in the event that there is a, a can, a, an early termination, uh, which is within the lock-in period, then clearly there is a there is a six month rent uh, that can get adjusted against the security deposit. Uh, if it's after the lock-in, then for one to three months, that is the uh, notice period, and one can adjust the security deposit against that. In our current uh, collections that we have uh, disc uh, discussed uh, earlier in the call, or the rental income that we have demonstrated, we've not, uh, since there have been no termination, We've not had to adjust any security deposit against that. Understood. That's it from my side. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Dasharat Mishra from Sage One Investment. Please go ahead. Hi, I have just two questions. One, have you renegotiated any payment terms to any of these construction companies who are working on your project? Mr. Mishra, may I request you to repeat your question again? Yes, of course. I was just asking if you had any uh, adjusted your payment terms with the construction companies working on any of the um, construction projects? Uh, not really. We've not uh, had to renegotiate or uh, change any payment terms. Uh, we have, in fact, uh, you know, been looking at ways and means to support them, and uh, you know, uh, there were several running bill that had been generated prior to the lockdown. So this was money that we owed the contractors. And we have, uh, over the last uh, three months, in small amounts, disbursed uh, uh, funds against these uh, invoices uh, that were raised against bills complete, uh, work completed. But uh, we've not had to renegotiate any payment terms. Okay, good. And the second question is on the waiting list. So. Given that you know, you've only had 10 or 12 people leave at each mall, how is the waiting list looking according to that? Well, is it fair to assume you'd be able to operate at those 98% occupancies going forward? Well, we remain confident that vacancies, if any, and largely these are in the, as I mentioned, in the FNB and food court space, as uh, we start seeing some level of normalcy return and as you know, in, in Maharashtra, they have not yet allowed 
uh, FNB to commence operation. Uh, we hope that uh, these vacant spaces, as they come up, will get uh, will get replaced by newer formats because uh, the FNB business generally does see a lot of churn. But we've also seen that where there is a vacuum created, there are always new format and formats and new operators that come into play. Uh, so yes, I would say that we should be in the high 90s in terms of trading occupancy going forward as well. If there is a drop of, it may be for a very short period. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Abhishek Bhandari from Macquarie. Please go ahead. Mr. Abhishek Bhandari, your line is in talk mode. Please go ahead with your question. Hello, can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah, good morning. Uh, Sushir, I had two questions. Uh, you know, first, uh, on the upcoming fundraising program, see, one of the reasons you have mentioned for raising that kind of money is seeking growth opportunities in the current environment when many weak players might be exiting or you might have some opportunities. So if you could give us some kind of, uh, you know, uh, idea about what kind of opportunities you're seeing, are they more in tier one market or they, and, and are they more brownfield kind of nature or land? That's one. Uh, the second thing, uh, the is on the uh, uh, reopening of malls. Congrats on that. Finally, some good news coming in Mumbai and Pune. So what kind of percentage of uh, leasing area will start with in the first few weeks? That those two are my questions and I'll ask if there is any more. Thank you. Thank you for your question, Abhishek. Uh, I want to mention here that we have, we will only take a decision on further capital raise once uh, after we get our shareholders approval. Our belief is that in this current environment, companies that have a strong balance sheet, liquidity, and you know, uh, and cash on books. These are companies that are going to continue to grow bigger and stronger going forward. That's our approach to this capital raising. We have not decided finally on the final quantum or timing as yet. Uh, I would like to again, you know, draw attention to our last investor call on this uh, matter, where we had explained that. We would, if we were to raise cash, it would be to have a bit of a nest egg or a war chest available with us to bide over, uh, bide over the the present uncertain times. And as we start seeing some level of normalcy starting to return, that's the time when we will uh, look at growth opportunities. Uh, there are sporadic uh, few growth or few acquisition opportunities that have been presented. Uh, both in uh, completed assets and brownfield assets, uh, but these are we will we will seriously evaluate these only once we start seeing seeing some level of normalcy return. We expect that after in about four to six months, that that would be a time to really consider any or serious evaluation of acquisition. But for the moment, we would like to hold on to this cash and just be keep it available as a war chest or a nest egg to buy to you at a certain time. Uh, your second question, if I may request you, Abhishek, to repeat again. Your yeah, second question was Mumbai and malls, uh, which will open on 5th of August. So what kind of uh, uh, leasable, I mean, the total, uh, what percentage of TLA will start with in the first few weeks? And just like in, you know, Bangalore, if I remember correctly, it was almost between 75 and 80%. Uh, what is the number, what you think would be uh, in three months? Okay, so let's understand that there are certain activities that are not permitted. So we know that restaurants are not permitted, family entertainment centers are not permitted, and the multiplexes are not permitted to commence operation. Uh, cumulatively, these may these may uh, translate to about 25% uh, uh, or thereabouts at an average of our total GNA. So about one can say about 75% of our total GNA may, is permitted to operate. Uh, we are, since this notification has come out only yesterday, our teams are now actively engaged as we speak with our retailer partners to understand their opening uh, plan and how soon they can inventorize their stores and get their staff back in. But uh, I would I would assume that we should see a similar trend as we've seen in Bangalore. Uh, 
as far as uh, the mall is concerned we are extremely well prepared to welcome our guests back in terms of all safety standards sanitization procedures other initiatives but uh, it would be safe to assume that at, in the first uh, four weeks out of the 75 percent of the permissible activities we should be able to hit about at least 80 percent of that area thank you sushir and all the best thank you very much Abhishek. thank you the next question is from the line of Amandit Singh from Ambed Capital. Please go ahead. Thanks for the opportunity. So, sir, can you help us understand what has been the operational area and early trend at Phoenix Palacio Lucknow? Uh, it's too early days, uh, Amandit, to talk about Phoenix Palacio. But uh, just to give you a broad uh, overview, uh, we have approximately 100 stores that are currently operating at Phoenix Palacio. We have uh, seen footfall of roughly around uh, 4,000 people averaging every day. In uh, UP, malls are not being allowed to operate on weekends. So Saturday, Sundays are off. Uh, the mall is shut. And uh, about of, of the permissible area, of the permissible activities, roughly 60% or slightly higher than that is currently operating. In the next uh, 60 days, we expect this number to move up closer to about 80% as the fit outs are ongoing with other stores. So this is an important point, point to understand that uh, retailers and several of the large brands are uh, working at a, I would say at a very good pace to complete their fit outs and or refreshing of their stores to open. Every day we are seeing two, three, four stores open up at an average. At this moment. Sure, sir, this is helpful. And sir, as a follow up on this, uh, I believe that the in place rental were around 105 rupees per square foot per month. Will it be fair to assume that minimum guarantee negotiation have also been extended to this month? Uh, yes, uh, for an initial period, I would say of about three months. Some, sure, some relief we have, we have given. For, for the initial period of three months, and in some cases, we may have extended some relief until December. Sure, sir. And so, lastly, uh, you were witnessing increasing traction on your residential portfolio as highlighted in the previous call. So, will there be any update on the same or too early to comment? Uh, as I had mentioned uh, in the last call, we have uh, created a new uh, product in our luxury towers there uh, where we have actually uh, resized some apartments and split the larger apartments into smaller apartments. Uh, we launched this uh, sometime in the middle of June and we have seen uh, significant traction in terms of the number of people coming in and the interest level remains high. In this period, we have concluded formally concluded one transaction and there are three more which have uh, reached a stage of finalization and initial deposits have come in or will be coming in in any day roughly around 15,000 odd square feet between these four transactions will uh, get uh, transact uh, will get completed in terms of sale and the average I price would be somewhere in the middle of range of about 14,500 to 15,000 Sure, sir. That's helpful. That's it from my side. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Biplab Dave from Antic Stockbroking. Please go ahead. Uh, good, good afternoon, Shishi. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my first question is, sir, uh, looking at you with the margin, just trying to understand what would be fixed employee cost, including management salary and other corporate expenses that can't be passed on as can charges so uh, I, I i'm going to answer this in multiple parts a we have okay. been uh, firstly all the uh, employees who who are uh, located and working within a mall their costs do get translated into the cam expenses and uh, they get passed through there Secondly, it's only the therefore it's only the head office 
team whose costs do not get passed on to the uh, passed on as can right uh, secondly during this period we have also taken certain steps in terms of reducing uh, salary costs we've had to work with our teams and you know we uh, everybody has been very very forthcoming in in taking a little bit of a reduction in those costs uh, typically in our hotel our employee cost was about 56 crore per year and that is now down to about half Hello. Sorry, did, does that answer your question? No, I just wanted to, uh, yes, uh, partly, sir, I just wanted to understand what is the employee cost that can't be passed on to uh, as can, okay, besides hotel. I mean, uh, there will be some, uh, you know, so head office so cost. Essentially, essentially, the head office cost is what you are looking uh, at approximately. Yes. Um, yes we we will just look look it up and we will answer that question shortly okay, okay that's fine that's fine uh, second question is sir uh, regarding uh, as we mentioned family entertainment uh, fnb and uh, multiplex not allowed to start in maharashtra uh, although it's a good news that they have uh, they're allowing the malls to operate very much welcome uh, but just trying to understand the impact of that Sir, in general, before COVID, what would be the uh, uh, income contribution of this uh, segment, uh, multiplex, FNB, and uh, family entertainment center, in terms of percentage rate of the total income that the mall earns? Okay, so in some states, FNB has been permitted. So, for example, you know, in Bangalore, our restaurants and all have commenced operation. Uh, generally, the contribution from entertainment. FNB and multiplex is less than about in the range of about 17 to 20 percent across the mall. The contribution of rent towards overall rent is up in that range. And just to answer your previous question, our okay. head office costs are in the range of about one crore. Currently, they've been reduced to about one to 1.25 crore per month. Uh, that's the reduced cost that, that does not get passed through as can. Okay, sir. I will come back in detail. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Atul Mehra from Motilal Oswal Asset Management. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, good afternoon and uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, so, uh, uh, particularly on the slide 11, uh, very interesting initiative by us on the uh, pick up initiatives like shop on the go and uh, home delivery. So just want to understand a little bit more over here. So uh, so a lot of these, uh, so while you chat on the WhatsApp, uh, the shopping assistant is primarily the employee of the retailer who's interacting or uh, is it uh, one of our uh, Phoenix Mills uh, employees who's interacting? How is, how is it uh, so far? Yes, so we what you know we have a kind of a concierge service across all locations. We've initiated this. Uh, we've taken this uh, uh, initiative as a starting uh, as a test case in Bangalore, and it is uh, our team member who sits at that asset as part of the concierge team who will co who coordinates this entire effort. So the WhatsApp messaging happens with our concierge team. And they are the shopping assistant who reach out to the retailers. We try and uh, provide a, a catalog and uh, facilitate the sale, the transaction. Right. And and, and, uh, and also, I, I want to add here that uh, in Bangalore, we've also started this new initiative where uh, from our Insta Instagram handle, one can mm. order food as well online. So there's a link up through Zomato from our Insta mm. handle and one can order food as well from the restaurant there. Right. And, and just in this uh, shopping uh, interface that we have on WhatsApp, so is that also that uh, over and above, say, the initial conversation that uh, we might have for uh, with one of uh, our employees, does it also redirect to, say, uh, one of the store employees, if at all there is a 
deeper level of uh, inquiry or uh, nitty gritty no. of product. Uh, so the the customer interface is is in our team member, okay. and that 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 does not get this redirected to to the store employees. Right. And Shishi, just one more thing. Uh, I'm just thinking about this uh, and led by this slide of yours. Uh, when we think about Phoenix as a place to visit, it's one of the more affluent uh, places to visit with a very uh, interesting uh, in terms of store and brand presence. At this point in time, if you look at it from a digital perspective, uh, you don't have any uh, in terms of digital platform which will have the store mix and the brand mix that uh, you offer. So, uh, is it uh, possible for us, uh, and is it something that we can think about, uh, where we can have an online uh, platform uh, in terms of uh, having all, all our uh, brands and stores listed, and uh, taking this initiative forward uh, like we've done with WhatsApp? Uh, is that something that uh, we can look at? Because in today's time, like a lot of people, I'm aware of. Uh, who are regular uh, shoppers and today this time they are somewhat uh, thinking about uh, to visit or not and so on so that can be like a great enabler for uh, your regular shoppers uh, uh, per se so anything of that sort yes so what you are referring to is what we are internally working on an initiative called the omni channel mm. which, which uh, basically uh, you know if you if you if you see our web, our new website of all uh, Phoenix market cities, you you will see that uh, it has been designed in a manner to facilitate an omni-channel platform, which we are currently working on with our retailers, which allows them to use our uh, platform to facilitate as an additional sales channel to facilitate online sales. So this is an initiative that we have undertaken and it's, uh, it's, it's being developed. Very interesting. And just one final thing on this, uh, in, as we maybe look at this platform and uh, so on, uh, I think what is also important is given like for us in the past, we were like one of the like, uh, popular destinations to come and everybody knows about it. Uh, the awareness around uh, say even the WhatsApp uh, or the Phoenix Market City platform, uh, we might need to build some awareness uh, through uh, advertising, uh, maybe if we can participate and with the retailers and uh, co-promote uh, uh, in terms of the online platform or the omni-channel uh, experience. So that can potentially build a lot of awareness and uh, in that sense. So just, just on that. Sure. Thank you. No, thank you for that uh, thought. I think our teams are actively working on this. As I mentioned, uh, we have, uh, we have uh, you know, kicked off these initiatives at uh, Phoenix Market City Bangalore and soon they will extend to our other locations. Uh, currently, uh, direct marketing is what we are focusing on. And it's mm -hmm. been only a couple of weeks since we've launched these initiatives at Bangalore. Uh, so there will be a lot of social engagement uh, that will continue to follow as uh, we see traction pick up on this. Great. Uh, very interesting. Thanks and all the best. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Abhinav Pandari from Nippon, India. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity, sir. Uh, while in the initial uh, comment that you mentioned, uh, on the lockdown period, the waiver of rental is uh, pretty clear. Just wanted to understand more on the uh, breakup between revenue share and the guaranteed rental. So what we hear from media with some of the uh, mall developers is that the breakup has gone down to as much as 50-50 or 60-40 in some of the cases for the next 12 to 15 months. So where we would be in this uh, overall breakup scheme of things? Sorry, can, may I request you to explain what you mean? Uh, so, uh, the minimum guaranteed and there is a revenue share from retailers, right, which uh, which which I understand, if I understand correctly, uh, was about 80 to 20 or 85, 15 for us previously. Uh, is there a change in that structure also in the negotiations? Uh, and if uh, yes, up to how much and uh, up to what tenure, just to understand. Okay, so uh, let's understand that typically our, uh, out of our cross rental, approximately 90% was coming from the fixed rental and because consumption was growing, we were getting the incremental, say 10% or thereabouts, 
on account of increasing revenue share correct now for the period of lockdown as you mentioned is quite clear once the mall becomes yeah. operational there is a reduction on the fixed rental component for a fixed period that we may have agreed with on an on a case to case basis uh i think if we just look at majority of the cases nothing kind of really spills over into fy22 now that maharashtra malls are also opening so it such waiver may continue for two quarters and in some cases until the 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 end of fy21 before we return to contractual uh rental so one could assume that as consumption picks up by the end of this year in some cases you may see fixed rental becoming about 80% or 75% to 80% in that range of the overall rental and the incremental coming from revenue share but it all depends on how consumption starts picking up and um, sorry does that answer your question so got it so uh, just the main base of 9010 there is no change on that base right is that understanding correct see like i said for 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 the lockdown period i understood for the lockdown so, period i understood yeah I, I, let me explain the con- the construct of our rental arrangement with retailers it is always the higher of either the fixed rent or a per- or the agreed percentage of revenue whichever is higher is what one derives Okay. 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 Got it. Got it. Perfect. Sir, it's clear now. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Mohit Agarwal from IIFL. Please go ahead. Yeah. Good afternoon, everyone, and thanks for the opportunity. Uh, so my question is, uh, you know, are banks looking uh, at any of you know the the deposits that we maintain with them? uh so like the debt service reserve accounts and all are they looking at that differently uh for us or for industry considering there could be some volatility in the rentals uh, for some time uh, so that is or or once the moratorium opens you know with uh, do you foresee any change in that so that was my first question yeah so as far as the debtra which is a debt service reserve account which is maintained as a part of any standard loan agreement we have already in the past created uh, the fixed deposits with the bankers uh, at the time of the sanction and disbursement of the loan uh, some of them is in the way of uh, fixed deposits and some also are by way of blocking of our od limits to the extent uh, of the amount that is required for debtra so it allows us to avoid any negative carry because fixed deposits are generally at a lower rate and the interest which they charge on the loans are on a higher side So some of the banks have allowed us to block the OD limit to create the debtra. So between these two, uh, we have already taken care of our existing obligations. Given the fact that there has been this moratorium, which has been extended by the banks for the first two quarters, there has been no additional requirement of debtra or any other conditions that have been stipulated by any of our bankers. We continue to uh, remain at the same. Uh, terms and conditions as was before the start of the covid and the lockdown and the moratorium so from that point of view there has been no change and we hope that once the mall operations begin and cash flows start becoming normal the banks will feel that much more comfortable and they would really not feel any need for imposing any additional condition which is really not uh, required and not called for because uh, the assets clearly are very very Uh, superior in terms of the security cover that we have offered so from a security cover point of view each of these assets offer more than 2x of the loan amount and it was a temporary mismatch of the cash flows which have been which this uh, moratorium extended by RBI has allowed us to overcome so i don't see uh, going forward there would be any issues with our uh, banking partners from any of these point of view Sure, so that's clear. And sir, just one clarification: you said that uh, the first quarter numbers, when you gave the cash flow, that will be the peak cash burn. Uh, you said that even even as the next quarter, uh, the rental might still be low, but you may start servicing uh, uh, the debt. So you you maintain that even in the second third quarters, you would see uh, the cash burn lower than first quarter. 
is that understanding correct yeah i think because the first two quarter if you see our rental income typically with the last year used to be our ebitda used to be equal to our rental income or even greater than that so from that point of view any recoveries that we have and as malls begin operations our uh, ability to recover all our operating costs through cam is clearly there so there will be no burning of cash there and it's only uh, fair to say that whatever surplus that we get will get utilized towards the meeting our debt and interest and principal obligations uh, but largely the 65 crore which you saw was towards our capex and all so it is not really a burn which is on account of uh, the operational cost or the cost that we were incurring during the lockdown period so from that point of view if you were to break it between capex and non capex items including the interest obligation that we would have going forward i think we should be uh, clearly uh, meeting our obligations and the cash burn may not be to that extent sure sir great uh, thanks a lot and that's all from my side all the best to you thank you the next question is from the line of abhinav sena from jeffrey please go ahead hi uh thanks for taking my question i have two questions one is on uh, the category wise sales that you have given uh, the sales trend so uh, the fashion accessories uh, these bits are running fairly low uh, now you would attribute this to some trend change in consumption or, or these things do vary with footfall they seem to be lagging so that's one and uh, second question is on uh, fund raising part again uh, follow up to what the earlier participant has asked now here uh, the uh, i mean there is if if suppose the, the banks are extending a moratorium or doing a restructuring and either of the two seems to be the outcome in the next 30 or days why do you really want to raise equity at this point in time thanks so uh, let me answer your first question you know it's quite evident when people are not step, not being allowed to step out of their homes for any social activities social engagements going out to restaurants bars night clubs people are not buying fashion and accessories so that is clearly an interim impact that one will see for some time as we start the as we start seeing more activities getting unlocked right so this is uh, this that's the reason but if we actually look at bangalore what we have provided is for the period of june on a like to like basis uh, uh compared to uh, june 2019 uh, where also operations in june in bangalore were impacted on uh, on account of an extended uh, 10 day lockdown that was announced in july uh there was uh, some uh, i would say some restriction of operations on weekend on sundays which continues even now uh if we just look at the category of, of fashion for the last week of june the number would have been higher than this uh, 19% which is an average for the four, for the full month and it kind of picked up during the month uh
this is the time when uh, we anticipate several opportunities for growth that are likely to come up in the next 12 to 18 months some of those we may evaluate once we start seeing some level of normalcy start to return right see uh Okay, thanks for your answer. I will probably connect offline on on this. Thank you, thanks. Okay, thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Swagato Ghosh from Franklin Templeton. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for taking my question. I have two questions. Uh, first one is: Are we closely tracking the financial health of various uh, tenants? Maybe at the company level or the franchise level, and if we are, uh, what percentage of our total uh, tenant pool is under stress now, and what is our contingent plan if some of these uh, tenants are not able to resume operations or have to somehow shut shop, especially for maybe the restaurant industry which has not been allowed to open yet. Right. So I would say that excluding F and B. we have not seen any indication we understand that there is this, this is a time of financial stress for everybody uh, retailers at large in general are looking at reducing the number of non performing stores and they have been shutting stores across the country uh, their stores in our malls continue to be extremely profitable for them retailers have a general view as to we that as people start stepping out for their shopping needs and the malls open up malls will become their preferred port of call for their shopping needs simply because we are able to provide a very safe and secure environment as opposed to let's say high street location and uh, this is uh, the view that our retailer partners have also taken uh, so while they may be shutting non performing stores or stores where they believe sales are not going to be high across the country they continue to have high level of confidence in our malls and uh, we've not seen any as such any termination uh, moving on to fnb as you said yes uh, fnb operators uh, barring the ones who have a pan india presence and have some cash typically this is not a balance sheet business uh, it's a, it's uh, so one can see some stress happening in fnb operators and the smaller localized ones more so who have food court operations but as i mentioned earlier the contribution from fnb to our overall rental is is not that high uh, and uh, the business is one of skill so if one operator does shut down it gets replaced by another operator and one will see that happening in the coming months okay but are we proactively maybe having those conversations or will we wait till uh, they come to us and say that they can't continue so we we've, we've seen in bangalore our fnb operators have started commencing operations in bangalore because the state government has permitted them to commence operations there so bulk of them have already recommenced their stores bars are not yet permitted to operate but uh, that's a discussion at a time when they will be permitted to operate we will get into that we we've, we've negotiated and closed the negotiation with those activities that are permitted to operate got it got it and second question is uh, why for all our operational assets we have the safety measures in place do we have any data on how we are actually doing on the safety part uh, what i mean is how many people we have turned away who are probably symptomatic or how many people uh, who have visited and probably tested positive but has not been able to spread the virus within our society, within our assets any uh, that sort of data which would give us the confidence that the measures we have put in place are actually working sure so we are uh, you know we are insisting that mall visitors have arogya setu as a contact tracing app go on their phone and uh, so we are we, we are not letting people in who do not have the app uh i am not personally privy to how many people have been turned away because the thermal camera showed the temperature uh, exceeding uh, you know normal levels 
but uh, uh, at the operational level we have uh, i would say we would have the correct protocols in place for that okay okay but uh, have the uh, uh, authorities demanded any or any that sort of data yes so uh, there there are strict guidelines at uh, both in uh, lucknow and as well as in uh, bangalore of uh, records to be maintained and we are complying we are, we are going to, we are compliant with all guidelines okay got it thank you thanks a lot thank you the next question is from the line of prem kurana from anand rathi please go ahead Yeah, thank you for taking my question, sir. Yeah. So my questions have already been answered. Just one, and if you may help me with slide number ten. Uh, so data that we've given them essentially comes to imply, I think, over I mean, July over June, we seem to have seen a sharp drop in footfalls. Because when I look at average daily consumption for the months of, let's say, June versus uh, July, there's a thirty-four percent growth, but average spend. So footfall uh, is up by 70 to 80 percent, which essentially means either uh, you know people have started rather in, the invoice size has gone up substantially. So what would explain this sharp jump? Is it that I mean there's a change in terms of category mix, or or would you kind of uh, attribute this to the fear that I mean there could be further lockdown, which is that people have started stocking more, which is why the size would have gone up in terms of average bill. Okay, so. Couple of things. Firstly, we are seeing that the profile of the shoppers coming into our malls is, uh, you know, these are serious shoppers. Uh, I would say, in terms of, as as you rightly mentioned, our average spend per footfall has been almost, I would say, more than three times compared to the previous year. True. Uh, so these are serious shoppers who are coming in, in into the mall. Uh, the other thing there has been an impact as i mentioned earlier in july uh, for 10 days or for 7 or 8 days the mall was actually shut because of the lockdown been announced in bangalore again okay and uh, even today sundays are not operational the mall is not operational on sundays mm-hmm. i don't believe that the average spend per footfall has gone up because of people wanting to stock up if you look at the category wise consumption that indicates that there is some discretionary spend also the average daily consumption has as you can see average daily sales has roughly gone up to about almost uh, uh, a crore a day mm-hmm. peak of operation compared to the last year also interestingly last year we had uh, you know we had the end of season sale where the base of consumption was very high in the month of june and this commenced only sometime in the middle of july in uh, bangalore and that too was shut down again for se- was impacted by seven days so right now the end of season sales are ongoing and that that does drive uh, a little bit of the consumption up sure But I mean, if I look at the same trend for Lucknow, it seems to be reversed. Essentially, it seems footfalls have been going up, but then average size is going down. So Lucknow, the malls are not operating on uh, weekends, and okay. there was a three-day lockdown also announced uh, earlier in July. In fact, the weekend after uh, we opened our Phoenix Palacio, immediately for three days, uh, there was a lockdown in in, in the month of July. Uh, so yes, compared to June, where the weekends we were operating, in July the weekend weekend uh, business has uh, has has been impacted because of the lockdown on on, on Saturdays and Sundays. Ah, thank you. Uh, yeah. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Due to time cut. Do you time constraint? We'll take that as the last question. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Shishir Shivastav for closing comments. Thank you, everyone, for joining in on this call, and we look forward to interacting with you at the end of the next quarter. Thank you. On behalf of the Phoenix Mills Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines.